Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. It is your creative weird makeup artist friend Cat Sketch to bring you another video. Today we are going to get into leprechauns. Turn into the leprechaun and talk about creepy cryptids. So subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this. We do two videos a week here doing body paintings, beauty makeups, effects videos, talking about really creepy stories and interesting things. So you can definitely hit the notification bell and subscribe for some more. If you don't know what a cryptid is, it is an animal or creature that doesn't have any substantial evidence of its true existence. It's really based in folklore. Just like the leprechaun, do they really exist? Is there a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? So that's why I'm going to turn it into the leprechaun. If you don't know who the leprechaun is, this is him. I know a lot of people were terrified of Chucky growing up, but instead of Chucky, I feel like the leprechaun could actually be real and it was a lot more terrifying to me over Chucky. Chucky just seemed totally made up and fake to me, but the leprechaun seemed actually real, like a tiny man who could chase me and kill me in my sleep. And it's one of those makeups I've always wanted to do since even I before I went to makeup school and I didn't think I could tackle it. But today we're just going to do it while talking about these cryptids. And I'm just going to do it with my own homemade prosthetics just using some simple liquid latex tissues and cotton I found around my house. So yeah, I am wearing this weird random green Robin Hood outfit from Halloween. And we're just going to put our hair up and then put a huge green hat on later. So the very first cryptid we're going to talk about is Old Ned of Lake Utopia in New Brunswick. Apparently there's a monster in this lake called Old Ned. It even dates back to local indigenous folklore, all of the tales about it. Some people's grandfathers have claimed to seen it as a child that it's very serpent-like. But this serpent-like creature was described as being scaly and running or swimming very fast across the water. So I'm doing the folds in the fight. You know, he has these folds of his laugh lines that are freaking terrifying. And apparently the, these stories go as ba way back as the 1920s. See, you could kind of just unfold these balls of cotton into strips like that. That's what we need. So this next cryptid creature is called Big Muddy Monster. How creative in Murfreesboro, Illinois. In Southern Erin, Illinois, near Carbondale University is where this creature is located. There's re been repeated sightings and not only that, but smellings of this creature. Does it stink really bad? There's also a Creve Corrier is another monster that says it may be the same thing or linked to in Illinois in the suburbs area. St. Louis suburbs is where that creature is. This is an animal that's akin to looking like and being the same size as the Sasquatch, which makes me like it because I love Sasquatch stories. But it has a distinct, unlike Sasquatch, it's more of a skunk smell, which sounds disgusting. I know some people love the smell of skunk because it smells like cannabis to them, but I'm not one of those people. Those believe that these two cryptids are the same, believe that it swam down the Big Muddy River in Murfreesboro all the way to the Mississippi River. And then north of the Mississippi River down to that suburb area. That's how it traveled. And that's why the two may be the same. Doing a little chin here. Next sounds so hilarious to me, but it's called the Bunny Man of North Virginia. But people don't know if we could consider this a cryptid or a ghost story. One story is a man that escaped a state facility and then he wore animal rabbit pellets as an outfit when he lived in the forest. This is for survival, of course, for him to stay warm. The other story of it is the same, but except it's an experiment that goes horribly wrong. And this experiment was in the facility, of course, and the experiment made him half man and half bunny, of course. This next one is called the Rougarou of Louisiana. It has many spellings and I hope I'm saying that correctly. And it derives from French Louparou. Louparou, I hope I'm saying that right. Which literally means werewolf. Like many popular stories, not only in Louisiana, but across the world of werewolves, this werewolf 
in fact resides though in the swamps of Louisiana. I'm just taking apart the tissue and then I'm gonna go like this just to make some layers to give our skin some gruesome texture. Ooh, this one's in Texas. This is the Lake Worth monster in Texas. This next story. In the wild North Tarrant County of Texas, Rome, the Lake Worth monster, and this was supposedly caught on camera in 1969. This person writing this story never saw it themselves, but it caused a lot of scare in the area when it did happen. But they don't even give any description on this one. Like, I want to know because I live in Texas. I don't live in northern Texas, but I still, as a Texan, I want to know what this sucker looks like. Ooh, the next cryptid has a picture. It is a drawing of it, but still, it gives me some sort of hope instead of leaving me in the dark shadows of mystery. But this next one is called the Grass Man in Ohio. Now, I might butcher this name, but this is called the Cuyahoga Valley in Ohio. It is a national park, and it is known to have hominid. Let's throw up a definition of what a hominid is. And this hominid is supposedly the grass man itself. The grass man has three toes and he's known to be more swamp thing than Bigfoot. He has some horns on him. Its legs are long and strong looking, but its stance is odd. I don't know what to think of it. Let's talk about the Maryland goat man. I've heard so many goat man stories. I don't know if I heard exactly of this Maryland one, but I feel like all across the US, there's some sort of goat man story. And I feel like there's a lot of goat man stories because the goat man also represents evil in a lot of people's eyes and Satan himself. I don't know why, I just think that. In a lot of folklore in America, I feel like goats and men promote evilness when it should be. Honestly, this leprechaun I'm about to turn into <laughs> evil. I'm telling you, this thing scared the bejeebus out of me at night and it made me not want to sleep alone. But this goat man in Maryland is a lover's lane type cryptid. Reportedly attacks cars with an ax while they're on lover's lane, you know. I feel like every town, especially small towns, have a lover's lane where, you know, you go with your boo thing to go under the stars at night. Maybe it's a park, maybe it's a cliff, you know, make out, have too much adult fun. But apparently the goat man escaped from a local university, USDA experiments, the University of Maryland's laboratories. Ooh, and that's how he was. The What's with all the laboratory stories on these cryptids? There's also a white river monster in Newport, Arkansas. But this monster was reportedly called this because it was spotted by the White River Banks in Arkansas way far back, even towards Civil War era times. It's a big scaly fish type thing that's apparently 12 feet long with a single horn on its head and, and it sank river boats. The next cryptid is a goblin, which are my favorite. I don't know if it's my love for Harry Potter and the trolls in there remind me of goblins, I need to know the history and hierarchy of trolls, goblins, ghouls, all that stuff. It'd be interesting, wouldn't it? I should talk about that in a video one time. But this is called the Hopskinville Goblin in Christian County, Kentucky. If you grew up in Kentucky, you heard of the Kelly Greenman. What the heck is that? Also known as the Hopskinville Goblins. It all started in 1955 when two families are terrorized by aliens. I hope this goes somewhere because what does aliens have to do with goblins? Oh, terrorized by aliens or goblins, they said they weren't even sure. Like what? How are aliens and goblins the same? I'm so confused. I'm sure you are too. But they were assumed to be aliens called the Kelly Green Men, aka these goblins. But their skin was not only green, but actually gray. And even to this day, there is a festival in this town in Kentucky about all the history lore of these green gray men, the Hopskinville goblins, also known as the Kelly Green Men since 1955. Dual fiber brushes, whether they're from other companies used as blusher brushes like this one, this is a ColourPop F5 blush brush, but it's a dual fiber end, meaning there's white tips that are thinner and more dense, compact black bristles at the bottom. These are so good 
for makeups like this where you have to get into the little nooks and crannies of the prosthetic liquid latex pieces we just made. And when we do zombie makeups on movies, these are the types of brushes we use a lot too to give a lot of texture and to get in all the nooks and crannies. This whole makeup, again, dual fiber, is a layering process. So I'm just gonna get some like burnt reddish brown tones to really define these crazy laugh lines that the leprechaun has. We want the high points to be that light tan skin tone color and the deeper set points this color and do shadow with this. And we're gonna even do more colors. Apparently there is an octopus in Oklahoma that people are terrified about too. That's all it says about it. But my next favorite cryptid that I've wanted to do videos about is called the melon heads. It's in Kirtland, Ohio, these melon heads. And growing up, a lot of people heard that these melon heads lived within the wood between Kirtland, Ohio and Chardon, Ohio, specifically in the woods. The story was that a doctor who lived in the woods somehow got a hold of a bunch of children. Possibly from a mental hospital, that seems to be the way all cryptid stories have been going lately. And he performed crazy experiments on these poor children that caused their heads to become massive. But the heads are very bulbous and misshapen. Again, they look like honestly hot air balloons as heads. It's just sad that they're on children. And it said that the melon head kids one night they revolted and they burned down the house of the doctors and that they now roam the woods looking for human contact. Sad. I'll hang out with the melon head kids and I'll feed them. But let's talk about the lizard man of Lee County, South Carolina. As a child back in the mid 80s in South Carolina, this person has a story for you, they claim. They lived around the Lee Florence County border this er story erupted around there and has stuck since forever. The report started about a seven foot tall lizard man. What? TV crews from all over the country even showed up to try to catch sightings of it. They even sold merchandise on the side of the road. Most of the lizard man sightings are dog reports of people probably with their lost dogs that were running by a freeway because there was one report like that where it was actually proven false. So ever since that report, like it's been dying down a little bit about the lizard man. But for years afterwards, like these lizard man stories would just pop up again when more reports were on the rise. There's another swamp Bigfoot type thing in Louisiana called the Honey Island Swamp Mus Monster. Mustard? Monster. I must be hungry or something. It's around Honey Island in southeast Louisiana. Basically, again, like Bigfoot, there's not many like picture sightings of these things. I'm so sad about that. But there's a dire wolf in Unitaw County in Utah. Unitaw? Uni Utah? Oh my gosh. It's a modern day dire wolf, human, werewolf type combo that lives on a ranch somewhere in Utah ever spill too much adhesive on your hands just get some baby powder and it should sop up some of that stickiness so it just so happens that a family moved into said ranch where this all happens and they noticed the windows and doors were like oddly tightly secure than usual the most homes and there have been wolf sightings in that area years ago where their home was the new owner of the ranch didn't think anything about it until they found dead cows on their ranch with holes in them. No blood and the ranch owner said he saw a werewolf far from far away. The wolf ends up basically running up to him and he shoots it. They did a really bad job of cutting the beard of this leprechaun in the movie. So it's very blunt ends like this. I'm sorry if it looks weird, but that's just what I'm doing from the leprechaun photos I have of him. The gun doesn't visibly harm the werewolf and it harmed actually the ranch owner and the wolf calmly walks away and actually takes one of his calves and he takes a picture of it apparently and sends it to the wildlife resources in his area and the wildlife people said that it's a certain kind of dire wolf but it's known in town as bulletproof giant wolves, unfortunately. So that's pretty scary, right guys? 
Ooh, I think we're done. Almost forgot. I have to paint my teeth. And just like that, we have turned into the Leprechaun. In honor of St. Patrick's Day, I thought this would be fitting. One of my all time favorite spooky characters that terrified me as a child. I hope you guys enjoyed this. All the products I use in this video will be listed down below. Subscribe for more videos like this. We do two videos a week here on this channel every Monday and Friday. Not only this, but beauty makeups, other creepy tales, body paintings, and really fun effects videos. So hit the notification bell, subscribe for some more. This was so much fun and challenging to do. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I always love doing fake facial hair and creatures, goblins and ghouls. Leave a comment down below on what you would love to see on the next video. If I pick your comment, I will definitely shout you out in the next video if it's a good enough idea. You guys are so smart. And thank you, see you in the next video. Sweet dreams, bye.